welcome to the Essential Omnivore Podcast. I'm your host, Lucia Holly, and I'm here to help you take the fear out of food, one bite and one conversation at a time. From guest interviews to the gooeyest of details about your guts, I hope you'll join me in creating space around the subject of our bodies and just what they might be telling us when we slow down and listen closely. Remember that the information provided within this podcast is for general information and educational purposes only and does not provide medical advice, professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or any other individual. Hey everyone, you're listening to episode 6 of the Essential Omnivore Podcast. Today I'm talking with Angelina Luckeroth, who is going to be sharing with us some incredible information about her journey with a medication-induced condition that is created through topical steroid use. This condition is called red skin syndrome, um, and it's also known as topical steroid addiction. So this is created by the use of over-the-counter or and or prescription um, topical creams that are often prescribed for skin conditions like eczema, which is what um, Angelina has. So. We'll be hearing her story about how this has impacted her life and just the depth and the magnitude that RSS, red skin syndrome, can have on someone's life. So I had eczema, genuine eczema, off and on throughout childhood, started when I was a baby. Mm -hmm. Um, But it went away. Uh, And then would come back, and I think I used some over-the-counter cortisone um, creams when I was, like, uh, middle childhood. 10 or whatever yeah. um, but then when I turned 18 it, it had gone away for a few years and then it sort of came back um, and at that, at that point I went to the dermatologist and they prescribed these creams mm-hmm. and told me to use them um, and then my condition just kind of keep getting worse and worse and I don't know if it was Around that same time, I mean, that's a stressful time in, in development, 18, just yeah. graduating. I was on birth control. I didn't, you know, I was eating standard American diet. You know, there's just regular stress. And maybe that was what um, caused the influx of eczema at that point in time. And then mm-hmm. and then on came the steroid creams. And then it gradually got worse and worse. And I would have to, you know, it never it never went away then from then on. And yeah. um I would have to, and I simultaneously I was looking for answers and stuff, but trying gluten-free diets, you know, yeah. really doing my research and trying to get to the bottom of it. You know, if this is genuine eczema, I should be able to figure this out. I mean, it's a pretty benign thing, and there's, a, you know, you can find homeostasis is what I was thinking. Yeah. But I never could, and then I would go back to the dermatologist inevitably, and they would say, Hey, you're not using enough of these. You got to take care of yourself of the better. Steroid yeah, creams. yeah, yep, yep. Okay. Um, labeled me steroid phobic. Told me I was wow. had a phobia of steroids, which is something that obviously people they they see because people come in. They're like, I don't. This isn't. Does this doesn't seem like a long term, a good long term fix? Yeah. You know, you're not supposed to use them for two weeks. I mean, if you see the insert of a a box of cream, you're not supposed to use them for longer than two weeks at a time. And so the and actual, so, like, written use of right. the steroids is different than what, like, a dermatologist right. was recommending to you. Right. Okay. It totally kind of conflicted, and but they just sort of were able to kind of s- scapegoat me and say, you know, you're not using them right, and then several years down the line at a different dermatologist, you know, yeah. they're telling me, oh, maybe you use too much. It's like there's, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, you, it was like incorrect, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's just bonkers anyway. Yeah, um, and they're putting all this pressure on you as their patient. Right. Right, who's coming to them with a very real issue that's right. not they, feeling addressed. Yeah, and they took my blood work and said, hey, your your blood work looks fine, you're, you know what I mean? Um, meanwhile, they're, you know, your blood work looks like you're healthy. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there co- covered nearly head to toe in this horrible situation you and, know and can you describe i think a lot of people already know what eczema is but can you describe kind of what what it is for anyone who has no idea right so eczema i believe comes from the latin word to boil over and that's essentially it's a blanket term for any sort of or for many uh, uh 
inflammation of the skin. So is it red and itchy? Is it slightly weepy? Is it super dry? You know, they all call it, they call it all eczema for the most part. And then there's psoriasis, which is different. And so I kept using the creams because I couldn't find another solution. I was, yeah. when I would cease using them, my entire body would go up in flames. Yeah. Um, I went to the clinic, um, very famous clinic here in Minnesota. Yeah. It's the name of a condiment, a common <laughs> household condiment. That's when um, you know they're really professional. Right, right. Um, and they, um, and that, okay, so that was when I was 22, just graduated yeah. from college was trying to again to see steroid use because yeah. I was trying to find the, the natural way. I was sick of being on these th- on these creams and being of like a slave to them, having have them wherever I went, you know. Right. And this is now f- like basically 4 years. Right. Of more intensive like since 18. Right. Like 22. Right. Sure, right. And meanwhile I had been, been you know tried acupuncture, been to different chiropractors doing different sort of, you know, elimination diets. Nothing helped. Yeah. All of the supplements in the world, so I tried every avenue nothing and so i finally went back my mom talked me into going back to the or going to the mayo i guess it was the first time i had gone yeah. there because the mayo has all oops and i was saying it they have all the answers <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay um uh and they said the doctor he was such a prick but um he said you gotta though you want help or not if you want help you gotta stay here inpatient for a week and we're gonna wrap you up in gauze and steroids and so like a Vanna cream, this lotion that they, they make in Rochester. Um, okay. And that, you know, and lo and behold, because I was suffering from steroid addiction, that did, you know, that, that, you know, that calmed it, quelled it. Right. You know, and, and then I was released from the hospital. So, I was so, I was so against more steroids at that point in time, but my whole family was there. They're like, you got to do this, kid. You look like hell. Yeah. You feel like hell. I was like. Okay. I was in pain. I was like saying suicidal stuff because it was just I was up a creek without a paddle, yeah. and I was so alone. I had met people who said, you know, I, oh, I've got eczema too, you know. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, honey, I just knew in my heart of hearts this was not eczema. Yeah, this was something beyond that, and so yeah. So so when you so you were inpatient and they wrapped you, so basically gauze this other mm. cream and additional steroids mm-hmm. so that it was more like. 24 like 7 it was 22 yeah it was 22 hours a day I believe that I was wrapped up in these but um, the the idea was there I believe they were wrapping the gauze was maybe war, with warm water too and so they're mm-hmm. it's a compress it's like a, you know it's sending the steroids deeper mm-hmm. better absorption essentially yeah so and their so their reasoning or when they were you know, telling you like, okay, this is what you have to do. Mm-hmm. Were they, what were they saying that, you know, you would be inpatient for a week, get this treatment and then, and then on your merry way or basically. And then, I mean, not that it, they say there's no cure, mm-hmm. you know, that that's the, that comes down to, you know, you have eczema, there's no cure. Yeah. There's no cure. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. This is what you have. And this is, you know what I mean? So it's like managing. Right. Basically. Right. Yeah. And so they said, you know, and then they gave me this other cream with the to send me home with protopic it's a it has a black box warning for cancer and it's wow. stung like a son of a buck when you put it on <laughs> like really bad yeah. and so i mean that i just hadn't ever i never really got too into that i know some people now who are going through protopic withdrawal in addition and some people say it's worse because it's and what, I mean, what is that is it a type a different type of steroid? it is i'm gonna miss it's i mean okay it's an immunosuppressant okay. Yeah, that's what it is. So, so and it's like a topical immunosuppressant. So they sent you home with that. They said okay, that and steroids. Done, and yeah, done the treatment. So now just go keep it under, keep it at bay. Right. Meanwhile, I was having all these weird symptoms that I didn't at the time connect. Like I lost my period for a year. I was getting cysts. I had, I got you know, I was getting I got cysts in my breasts and yeah. like. All, you know, all sorts of kind of weird bonker stuff that they say, you know, this has nothing to, you know, these systems, they don't actually, <laughs> these body systems don't talk, you know, you know, which is not true. Right. It's all right. connected. And, and you're there. There's my body screaming out, you know. Right. Your body's like, hey, I'm one human body. So right. So somehow I must be. Right. Connected. Right. Yeah. I was having a strange kind of temporary blindness in one eye that I come to learn years 
later was probably a result of steroids around my eyes, you know? Wow. And that has subsided since yeah. withdrawal and all of that. So, um, but on to finding the uh, the answer. Yeah. So that was twenty two. I was twenty two when I went to the. I'm twenty nine now. I was twenty seven when I learned about red skin syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad actually stumbled across something online, and he he got me a little food scale, and he said, "Hey, we should try to start weaning off these steroids because I think that you have." That there's something to that you might actually have a steroid addiction at that wow. it didn't sink in at the time I mean yeah. I was still I was like how am I gonna slowly I mean it's impossible really you know yeah. how to fuse a food scale to wean yourself off a cream right. though I, I did go from stronger ones down to OT over the counter and that's maybe helps a little bit yeah so uh but then I stumbled across this website sometime after that International Topical Steroid Awareness Network it's San mm. And it was everything. I mean, it was, I had found my, my cure and it was going to be hell to go through it because yeah. you have to withdraw and that looks like worse, the worst eczema you've ever experienced, you know? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what that, you know, so the idea is that the steroids previously, so it's been building up your body's getting used to right. the level of steroids am i right and mm-hmm. so over time your body's becoming very dependent on right steroids. so they're they're corticosteroids and you know and it's a cord it's a cortisol issue and so if you're continually supplementing these creams by absorbing them through your epidermis or whatever uh you you, you my body quit making cortisol and in hindsight i was having all sorts of like you know, like inability to cope, like anger kind of issues where like my head would be boiling, my brain, you know, just like inflammation of the brain almost. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so your body quit making cortisol. I, so in t- November of 2015, I, on the 14th day, mm-hmm. I ceased using them. And then within the next couple days to weeks, the rash just crept over my entire person and it was beyond a rash it was the most bone deep itch you could ever fathom you can't really fathom um and then you're covered in like hot sauce and hot sauce maple syrup cheetos fire ants and you know it's just completely excruciating and the only way that i could really escape it for some time was to Draw, draw a bath like a not a too hot of a bath because you don't with you don't draw too much of your moisture yeah. of, of your natural moisture um and so then I would escape to the bath and I'd be in there for several hours a day and I had to quit working for six months mm-hmm. which was a blessing because yeah. the fight or flight aspect up to this point I was in I was just like fighting for my life I was being chased by a tiger right constantly cortisol you know, tra- is a stress hormone right, right? Who doesn't know that so right when that is highly dysregulated right yeah so um yeah it was it was bonkers um yeah I just basically laid around and slept I mean inevitably the depression was I mean the mind the mind game was the most one of the most intense things i think just physically i mean beyond just reactive depression oh my god look at me like i can't do anything i couldn't going to the grocery store was the most stressful thing i would i would my best friend she commented like my clothes kept getting bigger and bigger and like it was like the david Byrne and the talking heads stop making sense where his tux keeps getting bigger but she kind of chalked it up to like attempting to sort of erase myself because I went from being somebody who loved dressing up and like wearing I was obsessed with vintage and you know makeup and lipstick yeah. going from that to just like running and hiding from the world for a long time and not knowing when it's gonna end either right. and that's like the unknown am I doing the right thing here is this a real thing you know I, I learned about this on the internet right. <laughs> you know is this a real thing though I I had connected with enough people virtually to and seen enough stories that it's like this is I'm textbook, which is ironic to say because this isn't in the textbook, but it should be. <laughs> it should be right. And it was something that dermatologists, doctors, did they ever bring up the fact that there could be a, this topical addiction to steroids? No, they only the only thing that they would ever say is 
because of course being the steroid phobic that I am and was yeah. they I would come up I would come at them with concerns and they said the only thing that you could be an issue is thinning of skin a cu- couple months into withdrawal I the severity of the withdrawal is so intense that it looks like you're infected mm-hmm. but I don't know I don't think that's necessarily it but that's kind of the fear tactic so doctors and dermatologists okay. were saying like, okay, don't, you know, just continue to listen to us. Don't right. You, or previously before kind of starting to get yourself off of the steroids. Be careful. The only big issue is maybe your skin will thin where there's continued use right. of the topical steroids. Right, right. And then once you actually started to come off of them, then you were experiencing levels of, I'm guessing, inflammation that looked like they were open. Right. Or, and then to them, I mean, so... I was planning on avoiding the dermatologist because I know what they say. I've been through the ringer with them before. I know I wasn't really going to get support easily. Yeah. There's one derm in LA who is like the kind of the pioneer, the Wizard of Oz in this situation, and he's one who started it San originally. Okay. Um, but beyond that, you can't not find a derm so I you, who will support you through this pretty much. Right. So I, but I thought perhaps I had an infection, so I got my sister to go with me to this appointment mm-hmm. for support and wit to bear witness and I wasn't there to ask to really talk about red skin syndrome because I (laughs) I just want to say hey swab this do I need antibiotics or whatever help me with this one particular question I have right right I don't want to hear anything else but of course the sight of me made this woman so upset Mm -hmm. and she was like personally offended or something you know it's kind of calling in some ways calling her profession into I mean I was saying like you guys you guys hurt people you know you really do with these drugs I wasn't saying that directly I wasn't trying to I know that I didn't need any more stress you know what I mean (laughs) I'm not trying to get into a fight with this woman but um she was like visibly flustered said you know I just think it's so sad that people um you know believe what they read on the internet as opposed to what professionals in their front in front of them is telling them and also um yeah, like basically trust the professionals, leave it up to the professionals, don't investigate. Yeah, like for, how dare you as a patient. Right. But she did at the same time admit that topical steroid addiction, they do know that it, they say it's so rare, it's not as rare as it is. Mm. doesn't happen to everybody who uses topical steroids, it doesn't, but mm. she admitted that it's, it, she kind of admitted, or she admitted that it's a real thing. She yeah. said, I don't, but I don't think that you have it. And again, I was textbook, you know what I mean? Poster that, child for it. How did that feel when she said that? I mean, I was just so ready to get out of there anyway, and she... I mean, I didn't believe her, I, you know? I just, I knew that's what I was gonna... That's what I was up against. I actually went home and then watched these YouTube videos of this nice doctor in LA who's this big advocate for... Her. Mm-hmm. And he kind of says that, you know, eczema really wasn't so bad it's you know steroids come came as a treatment for eczema in the 50s and then it's kind of gotten worse and worse since it used to be a childhood disease that you would you know outgrow yeah. but now it's sticking around for some people and you're kind of drawing a correlation there so yeah. yeah so I went home and watched videos by him and that kind of gave me the support again you know and a lot right. of the support that I got was from people in these Facebook groups I never thought I would be <laughs> <laughs> sitting on you know what I mean but yep. when I was home for six months and like hold up I communicated with these people and they we understood each other and it's just such a unique um you know to have your skin burn off from the interior yeah. it's like a chemical peel from the inside out yeah. day after day you know for months for years sometimes yeah. and you know I lucked out because I I mean, I'm still going through it two, two, two years and some a couple months later, but I'm confident that it's gonna, it's all gonna go away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And with coming off of the steroids, um, what is there a discussion about? I mean, so your our skin is always regenerating and renewing. So right. there's also there's coming off of the steroids and the whole total body effect that's coming from that, but. What is, do you know more, can you speak to, like, if you're saying that you're kind of like burning from the inside out, that regeneration, or just the length of time it takes for skin to turn over, or the skin cells? Right, so why does it go on for so long, you think? Yeah, yeah. 
I think it's a combination of immune system dysfunction just like hormones gone bonkers also with prolonged steroid use i think i had candida and fungal and like issues as well because those drugs all are breeding ground for it same with the antibiotics you know so i was a lot i was relying on those therapies and that just got me sicker and sicker um also so immune system dysfunction bonkers i keep saying that but um that whole thing but also the basically the damage done to the bear the skin barrier mm. from prolonged you know either just for the prolonged da- use and damage i mean what happens with it is so your skin's red and inflamed you put steroids on that shuts down the blood vessels it goes away then it comes cr- crying back for more and then they open up again mm. Yeah, but I just my skin barrier you know that's maybe the thinning of the skin that they're talking about sure. but my my skin barrier is just sort of compromised yeah in many places and those where I'm still seeing a little bit issues here and there nothing like I once experienced but um it's all in the places where I used the steroids the most it wasn't my original eczema from when I was a kid it wasn't it's not in the crooks of my elbows necessarily and behind yeah. my knees like like standard stereotypical spots it's more where you know little spots here and there where sure. I really remember where that cream was actually applied yeah most. yeah and I was working in the restaurant industry prior to quitting and going through withdrawal and every day on the before you know towards the end of it every day before work I would be like maybe kind of crying on the way there but I would be putting this cream all over my face and then covering it up with um with makeup and it was just total survival mode trying to just get through yeah yeah especially while cortisol is especially dysregulated right right so for the first six months you're at home and you're really just not able to do much because the main focus of your body is you know coming off of the steroids right what happens after that first six months um i think the spring came and it sort of i was able to get more vitamin d and more you know more time outside and Maybe more moisture in the air too, um, but I was able to, you know, start a new job but in a different capacity, not the restaurant stuff. Yeah. Um, low, more low stress um, feeling of like a, a job with purpose, mm-hmm. um, PCA work. Um, so, and then it was just kind of a just a gradual and just kind of dealing with the. The after effects, the PTSD, you know, I was just, I was so out of touch with people. Yeah. I was, you know what I mean? I was literally only communicating with my close family members and people on, you know, these people all over the world experiencing the same thing. And then, so my, I went from being able to like, you know, have great rapport with people to all of a sudden being like I'm kind of an alien I don't know how to interact with the regular people I don't know how to meet new people because of my stories to I mean I'm an honest person inherently so I can't um I'm not good at just like putting on a facade you know yeah but just trying to convey like you know who I am meeting new people trying to convey who I am where I've been you know what I mean like what my kind of you know why am I slightly fragile in some respects you know I'm stronger now but for those first the first year I mean it was just I mean wobbly knees coming out of the gate you know yeah just really beat down and what when you were meeting new people or telling people about your story what was their reception to that what did did people understand or is it foreign concept yeah it kind of just depend where they came from you know if somebody with autoimmune disease who had been prescribed steroids before Mm -hmm. and I had done some oral steroids too which really kind of sealed I think was a big part of me developing red skin syndrome because there's the systemic ones for a person with eczema are just a death wish I mean you're just you know you're going to be in a world of hurt pretty much so you know people with autoimmune disease or experience, you know, and who experienced any sort of like cosmetic um, issues, really, and I've connected with a lot of people in that, in that way, like people who have experienced similar or related issues. But then uh, there's people who would just, you know, right over their head, or you know what I mean. It is kind of, 
it's weird because I used the steroids. I was misled, and right. but I, you know, there is an element. I don't blame myself. It's not my fault. Um, I just did what I thought was right. And you were listening to experts right. telling you, "Hey, keep listening to us." Right. And don't. It, yeah. It sounds like when you be, would kind of like raise your hand, be like, "I question like continuing to use these steroids." They would say, Shh, "Just listen to us." Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's still weird, you know, because I tell people, you know, even now I'm working at a, in the school district and I'm still meeting new people and, you know, gradually my story will come up and be to be like, I was addicted to steroids. A lot of people initially, though, they're like, oh, you were a weightlifter, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Or something like that, because that's what a lot, a lot of people's relationships or knowledge of steroids is. Yeah. Certainly not the case, but... um. Or just, you know, just being an addict to something that you get no sort of, you know, you get no high from, really, you know? Right. right. So, yeah. So people have had kind of different... Maybe there's a stigma about that, you know? It just it depends wh- how, where, what your point of reference is and, like, how much you know about or how much experience you have and yeah. with all of it. Or people in the, ner- I mean, in the medical industry or nurses and... My um, sister-in-law is a nurse and she was one of my biggest um i mean she was one of the biggest critics of me going through withdrawal because it looks so brutal you know what i mean she's like oh, you got to get back on those steroids you know what i mean she yeah. pretty fresh out of nursing school meanwhile my dad was is an rn too retired now he was obviously my one of my biggest supporters and he also used uh, over the corner hydrocortisone on, cortisone on his forehead for for about 20 years wow. um and when I ceased using it, he did too. And then all of a sudden, he got these patches up and down his legs. So that was kind of interesting case in point. And when yeah. I told that dermatologist that, that one woman who I made so upset by just being there, <laughs> when I told her that she's cause she's like, oh, I don't know, she just made up excuses like, oh, he must, it must be a coincidence. Yeah, that's what she said. It must uh-huh. be a coincidence that all of a sudden he got these. So it's like, and you two are there and just being like, nope. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're in our bye, bodies. Bye. So this is not right. a coincidence. Right. Yeah. Um, exactly. So, and what was that experience like having the community um, of these people who have also been going through or, you know, trying to figure out what this eczema and red skin syndrome journey is like? Right. I mean, it was priceless. Yeah. And I feel like I, you know, some of these, a lot of women mostly that I connected with all over the world, you know, but, um, I mean, to have, for once in my experience, to have somebody who really, truly understands the severity and the the experience of this sort of continuous chemical peel, you yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. so unpredictable and so, um, such a mental messes with your mind, you know, it's like an element of, like, so all-encompassing, like, developing is borderline maybe body dysmorphia issues because of it or food phobia i what i what i was calling uh steroid induced anorexia because i was so scared to eat anything yeah. because i didn't know how it would affect me yeah have you have you noticed a connection between food and flares or yeah especially in the beginning i was a lot more reactive i I couldn't do even so I've been gluten free the whole time um even ferments and stuff I noticed real correlation and I don't know if it was a I think it was a histamine inability you know inability to break that down because my body was just going so wild um so is this all you know tomatoes all the nightshades I always see reactions to but that is gradually I mean I couldn't drink and of course, I couldn't drink any alcohol. That would like and instantly be, you know, even grapes, you know, mm-hmm. sulfites and all of that stuff. It was mm-hmm. all seemed to play into it. But as time's gone on, I've become more strong and able to live more relaxed in that sense, you know, and just kind of feel like a regular person who gets to eat <laughs> the fun stuff <laughs> and to eat a variety yeah, of foods. right. Yeah. And it's not always so it has to be so regimented and controlled right. and. Right. Because there is a psychological component to that, certainly, long term. Do you feel like there have been any additions 
acupuncture or you know taking walks outside anything that is especially during the most intense times was helpful. yeah definitely I love acupuncture I, I have a great acupuncturist who has like also served as my life kind of life coach you know the yeah. every acupuncturist I met has been so great and like so wise you know what I mean and they're all so chill um so that has been really I started going to Penny George and I got some really good support there mm -hmm. Um, fortunately, so quit working for six months. I was totally broke, no income. My parents, God bless them, were able to float my rent so I didn't have to feel like jumping off a bridge. And ha You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And so, um, so that financial component was huge. Yeah. Uh, not everybody has that. That's why people in my situation will go on cyclosporin or other um, immunosuppressant drugs that are primarily for like for organ transplants you know what I mean these are heavy drugs you got to get blood work every week but some people have to go that route because they have a family to feed and you know single moms whatnot you know right, right. so I was able just to you know be in the meadow and that was huge um so Penny George is great biofeedback therapy was really huge can you speak to yeah. what that is biofeedback therapy they hook you up to sensors on your face on your shoulders and then there's one more that just kind of gauges your overall, um, your overall like parasympathetic, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and so you watch these lines go across the screen, and you practice body scans or just general relaxation techniques. And you're sitting there with the practitioner, and he's got he's the guy who hooked you up to the machine, and he's you know he'll play a guided meditation, and you just watch these lines on the screen as you just. It's so simple. You just have to relax and, you know. And the lines on the screen are the signals coming from your body. Right, right. And you just gradually watch those drop as you, you know, work on your breathing and yeah. exhale longer than you inhale, which is a big one that it's just incredible. And, and so, so potent and yet so right, difficult. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, let me think what else. Definitely walks in the woods. Spent a lot of time at Wood Lake. Even in the winter, you know, just kind of low impact exercise, getting the lymphatic system going so you don't, you know, get too bogged down just sitting there all day, of course. But had to be low impact. Right. I didn't sweat for years. The steroids somehow compromised my ability to sweat. Instead, wow. I would I'd go in the sauna and I would get like a sort of a heat, a temporary heat rash up and down my legs instead of sweating. Like a pig or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and so, but eventually I was able, so I, I eventually I was able to, now I sweat and I have a sauna at home and like. Wow. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, like, right. I sweat now. Right. That's huge. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So, and now it's, you said it was your two year anniversary? Or? Yeah, about two years, three, four months probably. Okay. So. And can you also speak a little bit, before we were recording, you had mentioned that there's something to kind of the anniversary every year. Right. Potentially like a flare that can happen. Yes. It's very well known in the topical steroid withdrawal community or red skin syndrome. Um, but so every year, you know, for the first couple of years, eventually the idea is that this burns out, which is the beauty of it. And that's why we're so lucky in this particular autoimmune disease because it should burn out eventually if you support your body and well enough you know mm -hmm. um but this anniversary flare happens every year give or take a month or two um and each and either side but it's the body remembering you know what i mean and like i never i didn't ever understand the science behind this anniversary i'm like how does the body know 12 months i Maybe. mean how do you know yeah but recently i heard someone say that with limes Sometimes with people with limes, they'll have a, um, they will have a limes flare, like around the time that they were originally bit or infected by, so that kind of you know supports the idea a little bit too. But um, yeah, the body remembers, and you know how I mean it makes sense because you know see, there's a lot of strong emotions that come with different seasons and the seasons changing and stuff. Right. So I'm kind of enduring a little, hopefully, tail end of my anniversary flare right here. Yeah. But it's been pretty benign and and pretty. It's disheartening sometimes when mm. it affects my face and. But just moving forward, basically, and. Right. 
And like you had said, that it's not just, you know, it's a total body experience, not just your skin. Right. There's so much psychologically to it, too. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned using kind of the word trauma, which makes so much sense. Right. So feeling like, I would imagine, when there's a flare, kind of a recurrence that comes about, it's not just like, oh, yeah, there's my... Like, there's some discomfort. Right. It's, it's whole, the whole. Full yeah. body remembering. Being right. Like, Whoa. That was, yeah. This totally. is what, this is coming back. What's going on? Exactly. And like, I thought this was, I thought this was going to be over. You know what I yeah. mean? And what, feeling like you're backtracking two steps forward, one step back, you yeah. know? And is there, what is the time frame for coming off of the um, topical steroids? For Is it, does it differ widely? It, it, it will vary, I think. They say there's correlation with how long you use for, though I've seen situations where it doesn't seem to correlate. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you use for this amount of time, you're going to go through the withdrawal for this amount of time. What I've noticed is that a lot of people say the first six months is the worst. I mean, it's brutal. It's, it's like a zombie apocalypse. I was literally splitting at the seams. I, I felt like... The Nightmare Before Christmas, girl. You know where she's all stitched up, but I was yeah. literally busting apart it at the seams. Yeah. Beyond that, it, it varies. I've heard of one person recovering in under a year. Wow. And, what and is it? Be, mostly it's two to five years. And what's the definition of recovery? Like, what are the kind of, you know, the checkpoints? Yeah, I think you, you, you they say you should be without, in order to say you've recovered, you should be without... Uh, symptoms for six months even you know what I mean Mm -hmm. because it can be so sneaky and like I went into remission last year I mean for in the summer for a few months where I was just cloud nine I thought I was you know queen of the court (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah so for most people around any under five years let's hopefully we get through this I think you know it's you never know what's going on with people though there could be they could have black mold in their house. They could have mm-hmm. fungal things, you know. You, and that's maybe cause for some people to go on longer, you know. And like you or, mentioned, like candida or just like an imbalance in gut bacteria. Right. Or maybe kind of some barriers totally. to that fuller healing. Totally. Recovery. Right. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple of my questions. With the knowledge of these ex- major experiences that you've had, what is your idea of happiness? Mm, yeah. <laughs> you can take uh, a second. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy these days. Happiness is just being able to uh, be alive in skin that doesn't hurt. And, you know, it just it enveloped me. I it was claustrophobic when it surrounded me. Mm-hmm. And you didn't know how long I was going to go for it, so... I mean, I got little patches here and there, but I'm just happy as a lark, pretty much. And I'm doing all these, you know, I'm going skiing and, you know, I'm doing all these normal things. I'm having a glass of wine here and there. I'm having, you know what I mean? I'm just, I feel reborn, pretty much, you yeah. know? Expanded freedom. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. really appreciating freedoms that I never really appreciated prior. Mm-hmm. And I just, my compassion has really strengthen for other people like my awareness of what other people are going through is really you know increased and and that feels good there's so much there's so much hurt in the world and there's so much pain and through this and maybe this is similar to to the last question but what is your idea of health taking care of self-care you know it's a real buzzword out there (laughs) but really it's huge and there's so many ways to do it and these little things and down to this like little ways you can incorporate happiness listening to music that makes you happy you know what i mean there's like so many ways you can contribute to your good health by just doing things that are feel good and that maybe it's coming back to that parasympathetic state right or that whatever is feeling good might change over time but as long as you can come back to okay does insert blank bring me that feeling right goodness right go along with it right through discussing red skin syndrome, is there anything that you would want people to know if they maybe do have eczema that is maybe like expanding where it's occurring on their body or if mm-hmm. they've been told to use topical steroids? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, oh, 
avoid at all costs using topical steroids and I mean if if you get diagnosed with eczema just don't go down I mean look for the look for the root cause rather than the band-aid fix and it can be so and it's hard it's it's so um, cosmetic and not cute looking that I mean in, in our culture you know you just want to put a band-aid you want a quick fix mm. but you know you just got to endure your body's trying to tell you something and that's what's kind of cool about eczema is like there's something there's an imbalance and your body is straight up telling you <laughs> it's showing you yeah it's showing you right you know what I mean yeah. and you just kind of honor you have to honor that um don't touch the creams from the, really I mean I, can, I don't want to really pussyfoot too much yeah. but it's a slippery slope and even I mean, I've had friends who maybe have a slight addiction to these stuff, and they but they don't want to put it down because I mean, because I don't know. You don't want to admit that you you got a you got a problem with it, or maybe you don't think that I don't know. Just if you do use them, cease for a few weeks, see what happens. Does it get worse? Does it spread? Mm. Then you might have a problem. It's the worst. It's such a horrible thing to endure, but it, in many ways, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me because I was able to find health and answers, and I'm smarter and more resilient because of it, and better sense of humor, maybe <laughs> darker sense of humor <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Of humor. Right, yeah. really, right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you got something, you'll make it through. Yeah. I mean, I used them for the math probably, what, nearly 10 years on and, I mean, pretty consistently, so I had a longer recovery. Um, but, you know, you never know. You could get over it sooner or... Right. And but. I feel like that comes back to, again, that freedom that you had mentioned, too, where it's like feeling like you can have the freedom to come off of this cream that doctors and, you know authorities are saying oh, you better just be on this stuff right your life right and I feel liberated now I travel without these little tubs of you know poison that I hated so much and they made my fingertips feel so funny and like this kind of strange burning on my fingertips but it just I feel liberated I don't travel when I travel now I take my my supplements and it feels good and I, you know what I mean it's not like I'm I have to constantly lug around this kind of cover up to this bigger issue you know right. just suppressing it it's like you know it's like uh, restoring instead of exactly mm-hmm. yeah I mean because with the creams it was like the game at the I like the um, the arcade with the little rodent that pops up and you bop him on the head that's yeah. you putting the steroid on and that patch goes down but then lo and behold moments later you know uh, another one you just bop them all down you know you day after win. day you never win <laughs> and you i finally win. unplugged the machine yeah, <laughs> yeah right you gotta walk away from the machine right yeah right exactly um what would what's your favorite word my favorite word hope it is my middle name yeah but i was without it for so long mm-hmm. literally which was kind of a it was a real digger because it was my middle name and i was just hopeless and i was I used to say my spirit animal was a, a house, like an abandoned farmstead on the prairie that was engulfed in flames because I was just burning yeah. out there yeah. with no answers by myself. Yeah. And, and how do you feel no. the hope started to come back? I mean, just finding, finding red skin syndrome was huge. But then, you know, of course, that started the real process. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like life before finding that. And after, you know, it's just kind of time is sort of messed up in that sense. But, um, yeah, and then, you know, after the six months of withdrawal, starting to climb out of the ashes, you know, was really quite profound. Yeah. You know, it was just... I, my face was irrecognizable. I looked in the mirror for months and months, and my face had taken a new shape. Like, I didn't look the same, you know what I mean? And so when I finally looked in the mirror again, I was like, whoa, you know, I have cheekbones. I mean, yeah. somewhat, but you know yeah. what I mean? It's like seeing yourself again for the first time was pretty wow. pretty moving. Yeah. Pretty life-changing. Yeah. yeah. So 
On the flip side, a favorite word. How about least favorite word? Steroids are that's a scary word. Yeah. Uh, because if I was to if I for some reason was to take some prednisone, which is the oral steroid, or come into contact with creams, I would go back into mm. withdrawal and so Wow. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I can't if I have some sort of other condition I almost want a bracelet that says allergic to steroids because mm-hmm. that's an easier way to say because I kind of am you know what I mean I have such a relationship with this drug it's not like I can go back to using it because if I if I even for something unrelated to skin you know if I was to take oral steroids I would get thrown back into this machine again and right. chewed up and spit out again your body's gonna remember right it was right right before. yeah it's, it hasn't been long enough I feel you feel like years down the road I would still have another bout you know anything else for people who are listening that you just you you want to be known about red skin syndrome or eczema or topical steroids or steroids in general yeah um they say like I said earlier on the insert it says don't use them for longer than two weeks you can get addicted in under or like you know within a week though even you know what I mean wow. and so if you get a condition that you introduce that to and it's chronic or worsening I mean, I think this goes beyond eczema, and I don't want to get too preachy, but there's so many autoimmune conditions out there, and people, you take, you know, the such a standard treatment or Band-Aid temporary, because they're suffering so bad, and people want help, you know what I mean? And so right. they're, but I think steroids in general, with autoimmune disease, they render you so much more vulnerable and ill than you were prior. Mm-hmm. And I don't have Crohn's disease or I don't know what that experience is like and I know it's hell Mm -hmm. and I feel for those people so deeply any sort of you know GI or issues or you know there's so much autoimmune disease out there but yeah stay strong (laughs) try to find alternatives you know yeah and do what you can but and keep on I mean it, it seems like through this journey too that you've had some really great support like from your dad and from family right but that a lot of it has been coming back to recognizing when things don't feel right like it sounds like you never felt really super gung-ho about like yeah great let me put on these steroids right totally yeah very good point you know trusting your intuition and this whole experience has really helped me find to or helped me build that intuition muscle and really kind of you know go with your gut yeah well, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you for having me. About this. Yay, I thanks really for having it. me. <laughs> Likewise. Hey, thanks so much for joining along on today's episode. For a full archives of past episodes, hop on over to EssentialOmnivore.com or subscribe to the Essential Omnivore podcast on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher.